Okay, in this video, I will show you guys how to find the derivative of the function ln x. And the best part is, I will show you guys two ways. The first way is, of course, the good old definition of the derivative, right? And let's get started with that first. So, when we have the function f of x is equal to ln x, we know that f prime of x, by definition, this is equal to, we take the limit as h goes to 0, and right here, we have that difference quotient formula, namely f of x plus h, and then minus f of x, and then all this over h, right? For this term, we just need to plug in x plus h into this x. So we will have this being equal to, we take the limit as h goes to 0. This is just ln of x plus h. And then this is just, of course, ln x. So we minus ln x. And then all this still over h, right? And now, what can we do? As we can see on the top, we have a difference of two lns. And by one of the log property, we know we can combine them together into just one, right? And let's write that down. And of course, I have to copy this down again. The limit as h goes to zero, for the top, we know we can put them together into just one ln. And let me just write that down in red. ln of, and this is going to be on the numerator, right? And this is going to be on the denominator. And once again, this is just the log property. This is going to be ln of x plus h, and then over x, right? That's for the top. And of course, we still have the over h, but I don't want to put this down as this over h. Otherwise, that's like a complex fraction, right? I can avoid doing that by writing the over h as multiplying this by 1 over h, right? Same thing, right? So now, what can we do? Well, as we can see, we have something times ln, right? And first of all, before I do anything, let me just use a blue pen to put down parentheses right here, right? Okay, let me just ask you guys this right here on the side. Suppose I have the number, let's say, 3 times ln of x. What can we do with this number 3? We can take this to here, and if it becomes the exponent, this is equal to ln of x to the third power, right? Like this, right? Let's do the same thing right here. Let's take this right here to here and becomes the exponent. In another word, this is the limit as h goes to 0. And we will have ln. And the inside, it's x plus h over x, right? But we can split the fraction. You see, x over x is 1. So we can just put on 1. Plus h over x. Let me just write it down like that, all right? So we can simplify the inside a little bit like this. And we have all that raised to the 1 over h power, all right? So that's pretty much the idea behind it. And now what can we do? Well, real quick, if you plug in 0 into this term right here, you get 1 plus 0 over x, which is 0. So inside, we have 1. Plugging 0 into here, we have 1 over 0, which is infinity. Inside here, we have 1 to the infinity power. That's not that good, because it's indeterminate. We have to do more work. But this part right here also reminds us the definition of e, right? One version of that. OK, so we are going to somehow just focus on that. But we do have this ln that's bothering us, because this is ln of this part right here, right? However, when we are taking limit, because ln is a continuous function, ln is a continuous function, the limit of a continuous function is that continuous function of the limit. In another word, I can bring the limit inside and then just focus on this part. At the end, we do the ln, all right? So let's do that. Let me write down the ln first. And then I will write this down inside, all right? I will put this down in blue. Inside here, we will have to focus just the limit as h goes to 0, just this part, as I said, 1 plus h over x raised to the 1 over h power. We are going to just focus on this part, all right? And because I told you, this reminds us the definition of 
E. Let's write that down on the side. As I said, there are different versions of the definition of E. This is one of them. This is the, like one of the original version. When we take the limit, and let me not use H, let me use a different letter, let me use T. And this version is from the compound interest formula. So let me say T goes to infinity first. And the expression is 1 plus 1 over T raised to a T's power. This is one definition of the number E, all right? Well, a small trouble is that this right here is H goes to 0. This right here is when T goes to infinity. But it's not that bad. This is an easy fix because we have a cousin version of this definition, all right? And this is what we can do. Instead of looking at 1 over t, we can look at this as the following, all right? And let me just write down the following. We'll do some substitution. But this is just an algebraic substitution. It has nothing to do with integration whatsoever, all right? So here we go. Let And let me just use u. But this u has nothing to do with the u substitution in the integration sense, all right? This is just an innocent u. Let u as a new variable to be 1 over t. All right? And you see, as t goes to infinity, let me just write this down first. Let's look at what's the behavior of u. u is going to be 1 over infinity. And you know 1 over infinity is 0, meaning that when t goes to infinity, u will be going to 0. And now we'll take this, change that into the u world, right? In the limit sense. So now, bring this together, we will have the limit. I will write this down as u going to 0. And then we have the parentheses 1 plus 1 over t is the u, right? So let's put this down right here. And right here we have one more t. But we know we can just multiply t on both sides and divide it by u on both sides. In another word, t is the same as 1 over u, OK? So I can put this exponent as 1 over u. And Everything on the left-hand side is just like a different form. The result of this is still going to be E. And this is the form of the definition of the number E that we'll be using. Because we see we have U is approaching to 0, just like when we have H is approaching to 0. So they are much more similar, right? However, they are still not exactly the same. Because here we have 1 plus this thing, H over X. But this is just a U, right? So we'll be doing another substitution. And you guessed it, I will just say let u equal to this part here, h over x, all right? And real quick, let's see what do we get. When h is going to 0, well, I'm not looking at x. I'm looking at u. u is my new variable. u goes to what? We can just put 0 into h right here, right? So we will have 0 over x, which is 0, meaning u will be going to 0 as well. So let's write that down right here. And now we will continue from here. This is going to be, we still have the ln on the outside. And then let me just open this right here. And then for the inside, we still have the limit in blue right here. But instead of putting down h is approaching to 0, we will have to write down u is approaching to 0, right? This limit is in the u world now. And we have to make sure we change everything right here in terms of u, right? We shouldn't see any more h, but x is OK. Anyway, we have that parentheses, and then the 1, and then x over h is exactly the u. So we just say 1 plus u like this. And now we still have the h right here. This is 1 over h, right? What's h? Well, let's look at this. u is equal to h over x. We can just multiply x on both sides. So we get h being u times x, just like that. And we'll just put this right here. So this is 1 over u times x, right? And that's pretty much what we have. And now what? This is still the ln of this limit. We are going to focus on the inside, OK? All right, this is almost the same as that except for we still have the 1 over x right here, technically, right? Well, this is just like 1 over u times 1 over x. So we know we can use one of the rule of exponents to fix this a little bit. And let me show you how to do that. 
First, I will write down the equal sign in black and then the ln in red and then the parentheses in red, all right? And now, check this out. In here, we will write down this as the limit as u goes to zero and then this is one plus u. And then, let me first write down the one over u like this and we'll write this right here raised to the one over x power. Why? Because when we have a power to a power, we multiply the powers. 1 over u times 1 over x gives us 1 over ux, right? All right, and now here is another technical thing. Inside here, I have ln of this. But if you look at something to the 1 over x, and just pretend x is actually a number, something to the 1 over x is just a function and it's a continuous function. When we are taking a limit of a continuous function, we can say it's the continuous function of the limit, all right? So we can actually bring the limit inside. In another word, this is going to be, still we have the ln on the very, very outside, like this. And then let me just open this right here in black right here, all right? This to the one over x. This is actually just a continuous function, so we can do that. And we will have the limit of u, going to 0, and then 1 plus u, and then raised to the 1 over u, like this inside. And now, what's this? This is precisely the e number, right? So finally, we can say this is ln in red, and then the blue one is just the number e, and then we raise that to the 1 over x power in black, right? Close that. What's so good about this? Well, ln and e cancel each other out. At the end, we see that the answer is just going to be 1 over x, isn't it? So here's another way to differentiate ln x. However, in order for us to do this, we must have the derivative of exponential functions first. And you can check out the video in the description for that. And also, we will be using the implicit differentiation right here, all right? And this is how it goes. First of all, I will just begin by let y equal to ln x, right? So you see, y is a function of x. And we know ln of x is the inverse of e to the x, right? So we're just going to be doing e to that power, e to that power, e to this and that on both sides. This way, e and ln will cancel each other on the right-hand side, and we get another equation, e to the y is equal to x, right? And the advantage of looking at this equation is because we will have e to the something. And we know how to differentiate that already, right? Although y is not isolated anymore, but we can use implicit differentiation. And this is how it goes. Put down d, dux, draw this equation. The derivative of e to the y, first, it's e to the y, it repeats. But because y is a function of x, the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of y. Namely, that's exactly dy dx. That's what we want, right? On the right-hand side, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, that regular, that innocent 1, right? This is just 1. And now we're pretty much done. We can just divide e to the y on both sides, so we get dy dx to be 1 over e to the y, isn't it? And now, what is e to the y? Well, we can do much better than e to the y because we see that e to the y is nothing but just x. In another word, this right here is just 1 over x, isn't it? And this right here is the result. You see, to differentiate ln x is just 1 over x, right there, okay? So good. Okay, here's the bonus. How would you differentiate log base b of x? As we can see, this is just any legitimate base b, right? It can be like 2, it can be like 17. This is no longer log base e. This is no longer just the ln of x, all right? So in this case, what can we do? Well, we do have the change of base formula, right? So let's write that down right here. The change of base formula for logarithms. Whenever we have log base b of x, like this, 
we can write this down as ln of x over ln of b, like that. And by the way, a small remark is, as long as the top and bottom log are the same, such as log base 2, log base 2, this is still legitimate. I can say this is log base 2 of x over log base 2 of b, right? But of course, ln, ln, they're just log base e, log base e, so this is correct. We will be using this to help us out with that, all right? So, you see, to differentiate this, it's the same as saying to differentiate log base b of x, which is ln x, that's just written down on the top like this, over, we have the b for the base, so that's just ln b like this on the bottom, right? Okay, now, b is a number, ln b is also a number, under the assumption that b is legitimate. For example, b cannot be 1, b cannot be negative number, all right? Since this is just a number, we can just like take it to the front, all right? So we can look at this as, this is 1 over ln b, right, because that was on the bottom. And then we just have to differentiate ln x now. And what's the derivative of ln x? 1 of x, right? In another word, this is 1 over ln b times 1 of x. And of course, we can write this down much better. Altogether, 1 times 1 is 1, over, put the x in the front maybe, and then ln b, like that. And this is the formula to differentiate log with any legitimate base, b of x, like that. And that's it.